<laughs> no, we got no intro music. Oh, we're, just, we're just straight in, but we are live now. So, uh, welcome back to New to Hill Country. I'm here with some gentlemen uh, from the National Guard, and I'll have them introduce themselves in just a sec. But uh, just start off by talking just briefly about the, you know, just our sponsors for the podcast. We've got SBG Texas, which is where we're recording today. SBG Texas, uh, martial arts and yoga school, premier location for martial arts training. Um, come on in and, and just see what's different about how we train. I think a lot of places, um, you know, set a very different perspective on martial arts training than what we do. And I, I think, you know, one of our main coaches, because we're a worldwide uh, phenomenon, one of our main coaches is John Cavanaugh, uh, co the coach of Conor McGregor, and you know we want to update the software without damaging the hardware, and I think that that really sets us apart from other places. Most places, it's more of a weekend warrior vibe, whereas we're a place that you can expect to train for a couple of years and not, you know, be counting your injuries on your fingers and toes or something. So. Uh, the other shout out is just going to Element, which has been so great to us. I'm so great to us, especially during the lockdown. So Element is, uh, you know, an amazing electrolyte mix. And um, right now in the New Braunfels area, I think I'm still the exclusive uh, retailer of it. Um, but they're really blowing up so much so that I probably have to call them for a check on the sponsorship stuff. But, like, uh, but they're doing great. So. Uh, and I and I couldn't wish them I wish them well because it's such a it's a great product and the people and the company have been so good so but anyways welcome to the show gentlemen I'll have you introduce yourselves thank you for having us we definitely Absolutely. definitely appreciate it uh, my name is Michael DiCarlo. Uh, I'm born and raised in New York been here in Texas for the last ten years uh, the reason I came down here was actually for the military I switched over from the reserve component in New York mm -hmm. and uh, I went active duty. I did three years of active duty mm -hmm. and the last eight years I've actually been part of the National Guard. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been it's been a great great eight years and it's been a great 13 year career. Uh, okay. The reason why I made the transition from active duty was because I just didn't want to wear the uniform every day. Okay. I was newly married, I was gonna have a kid on the way and I just mm -hmm. I wanted to be home for them. Sure. And uh, that's that's the biggest reason why I, I transferred from active duty to National Guard to have more freedom and have more capability of kind of what I wanted to do with my life and be more of a family man. Okay. And that's the reason why I've been in the National Guard now myself. Um, the last two and a half years I've been in New Braunfels. I love New Braunfels and I love the area. It's a very booming and, and upcoming community and, mm -hmm. and a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. Okay, cool, cool. And I'm, I'm uh, Nathan James, I'm a specialist in the Texas Army National Guard. Um, how did I end up in the Guard um, is, you know, kind of more of a roundabout story. So <laughs> I'm originally, originally from uh, Buffalo, New York, right? Yeah. Two guys uh, from North New York, kind yeah. of like. Yeah. I'm from Buffalo, he's from Yonkers. So okay. Where's yeah. Yonkers? Like? So I Yonkers, don't know New York at all. So, so Yonkers is, is in the city. It's like not New York City, but it's like just outside of New York City. He's like right out of yeah. the boroughs. I actually right. haven't been to New York City. That's like one of my it's definitely, places that I've like, there's a few big places that I haven't been to, and that's one of them. That's New York like, should oh. definitely be on everyone's bucket list, and, and I'm sure he'll say the same thing. I don't know about Yonkers, though. Uh, yeah, maybe not Yonkers, maybe not New York, but, but New York City itself, and you know, sure. I tell a lot of people I know, he could probably vouch for it too, it's like, there's more to New York than just the city. Yeah. It's like sure. Buffalo, and like in between sure. the city and Buffalo, like you have the Catskills and the Adirondacks, so you have mountains, you have mm. cows, you have ranches, you lose mm. cell phone service in some areas, oh, wow. and people are like, New York is that big? I'm like, yeah, New York is actually a pretty big state, sure. there's a lot more to see, so. I mean, if you drove like, like an explore. hour northwest of Yonkers, you're probably in a cornfield. No. And Buffalo is kind of the same way because we're on the entire western side of New York. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we have to deal with all of, you know, New York City stuff. That's kind of the, that's the thing about New York State is like New York City always leads and then yep. everyone else has to follow. Yep. So, and it has really no application to us in, in western New York because we're damn near Canada anyways. Yep. I see. Um, but, you know, I, I was born and raised out there, you know, kind of, Buffalo's a very blue collar, mm -hmm. all America city, um, you know, want to plug the Buffalo Bills, uh, <laughs> AFC East <laughs> champions, uh, we are America's team, you know, I should put that out there, you heard it here first, right? Because <laughs> yeah, I heard someone say that on the, on the radio the other day, and I was like, I've been saying that for years. I've been saying that for years. Well, because like, do you drink Dunkin' Donuts? 
A donut. You don't drink it. You don't yes. drink Dunkin' Donuts, but that America runs on Dunkin', right? Yeah. It's the same thing with the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. They own the phrase, but nobody watches the Cowboys outside of Dallas. Let's be real. <laughs> but everyone's second team. You might have a first team, but everyone's second team is the Buffalo Bills. They're Buffalo now. We'll see. It is. I'm telling you. Anyways, anyway. So I was born and raised out there. Um, went to went to a smaller like you know mid range high school um, for the area. You know we only graduated like 300 kids in my class. But we were kind of big compared to the rest of the town. Um, went to a small Jesuit college out there, uh, Canisius. Um, yeah. Got a degree in political science, you know. And I'd always kind of wanted to join the military, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I was I was like eleven when like nine eleven happened, so I was like oh, wow. just old enough to remember, mm -hmm. um, you know. And they were supposed to turn off all the TVs and stuff. And we, you know, I had a a math teacher that was like, "This is history. You'll need to see this." So like, I remember like. You know seeing the seeing it all you know as a kid and i was like well i knew that you know you see that and you're like we're gonna go to war like there's no way yeah. um and i was always a little bit more kind of i guess mature kind of ahead of my peers a little bit when it came to that stuff so i knew the military was something that i always wanted to do so you know here i am i'm like 18 and um you know it's time to you know make a decision am i going to go military am i going to go into college um, and you know, my dad, you know, had never, didn't even graduate high school. You know, he just started raising a family right away. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my mom had kind of at a later age in life decided she wanted to be an RN. So she got, you know, got that going. And, um, you know, then that kind of fell, you know, by the wayside as time went on. So they're just like, they're like, Nathan, you're like, you, you're going to be the first James to get that bachelor's degree. Like we want you to go to college. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to do the military though. And this is in 2008, like the surge had happened and was still kind of going on um, and so I applied to one college I applied to the hardest college in town uh, with the idea that I wouldn't get in and that would be my cover to go uh, but of course I got accepted so I just like trudged through the next four years of that um, it was you know it was a good time it was hard um, I'm thankful for it now that I did it at the time I was like this is the most painful thing ever um, did that got out of that did about a year a uh, little less than a year of service with uh, AmeriCorps Okay. which is like the domestic peace corps mm -hmm. um and then i came home from that and i was back in buffalo and i was like you know what like i'm just gonna sell all my stuff and move to colorado so i moved to colorado mm -hmm. um but the, why why colorado and what, that's just... so in americorps we were stationed out of denver um okay. and i like one of my uncles growing up was always kind of he was he was this i mean the guy's name was literally john he was like this big john wayne style kind of guy okay. And um, I used to do like construction with him on the side and stuff when I was a kid. And um, he was just always doing real crazy stuff. I mean, we'd go over to his house and he'd be doing like a handstand on like the peak of his roof. You know, he was like a gymnast in high school, but the guy was like <laughs> six four, and he's like forty years old and can still do a handstand. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, he was always he had he had lived in Colorado at one point and had like loved it and stuff like that. So like at a young age, I was like, Colorado's kind of the place, you know. Um, and I like to snowboard and all that. So I was like, I'm going to go out there and hit the mountains and hike and all that sure, kind of sure. stuff. And so I got there with AmeriCorps and we did, um, our whole mission was to like assist national parks or parks okay. that needed extra help, you know, because they can only have so many rangers. Everyone's got a tight budget. So we were like the volunteer force to kind of back that up. Okay. So I got like wildland firefighter certified out there and mm -hmm. uh, got to shovel snow off of uh, Buffalo Bill's grave. Mm. You know, literally work with bison. Like I'm from Buffalo. Like this is just like, sure, ah! yeah, sure. and so I went back home and I was like, man, you know, I'm like not shitting on my friends, but everyone was just kind of doing the same thing, and I had I had kind of gone a different way. So I was just like, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna send it, you know, and and move out there. And so I lived on a I lived on a cot in the living room for a while, and we eventually reassembled the twin bed that had been destroyed, and I got a job, and I met a girl. Um, and we moved in together, you know, she's my wife now. Um, we had our daughter out there. Mm. And so things were going good, but you know, then marijuana struck, right? So we got there and like, I was there from like most of 13 into 14, 14 right. kind of went legal. Um, and there were so many people moving there in 2014 that there was always furniture on the highway. Huh. Like you couldn't drive down, it's, it's uh, what is it, 35 here? Well, it's, it's 25 out there is the major route. <laughs> 
there's literally just like so many there so many people moving there there's like an end table or a couch oh, cushion that's every crazy. time that's when it went legal like not just you i you say i was out of the country for a lot of that stuff so oh, it wasn't so that, just decriminalized it was like fully legal so that was when uh it was like fully recreational huh um you know just like you know it was just it. like head shops on every corner like or i kind of heard yeah. someone say that about parts of like california when stuff like that went down they were really yeah. kind of you know not that i was ever in any of them but um they were really kind of like sketchy bodega type places right. and like now when you drive by now they're like starbucks huh. i think there's one even called That's like starbuds or something so you know it's like <laughs> totally commercial totally americanized yeah Completely. Fairly predictable, but funny, like, yeah, you know, just like, well, that's gonna eventually happen down the path. Is just like, gonna take someone else's name and just change it a little bit. And, it's just capitalism, you know, yeah, 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 sure, sure. You know, but um, it's funny. So, the cost of housing and everything just mm -hmm. went insane. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I was, I had a couple jobs while I was there. I, I met my wife working as a barista, as every millennial I'm sure has at some point. Um, no, you're not a millennial. Well, still, <laughs> like everyone's a stuff. I didn't actually and know quite a few people. Either. There was one person on one side of the yeah. 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 Like, yeah. There's a thirty year old listening to this right now. I guarantee you, <laughs> at some point, they got paid to make hot beverages. Yeah. But anyways, um, I did that, um, and then I wanted more. I knew I was smart. I knew I could pass the test. So I was like, the cost of houses going up. Mm -hmm. Let's become a real estate agent. Mm. Um, and apparently everyone else had that same idea. So they're like, you couldn't swing a dead cat and not hit. This was like 2007? This is, no, this is 14. This is probably, I think I got licensed in 15. I got you, okay. And so, you know, and I literally, the coffee shop I worked at was in front of the, the world headquarters of Remax. Okay. So I was like, I was like, there's, it's just gonna happen. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna, you Knock know. And of course I became a Keller Williams agent, you know, mm -hmm. go figure. And um, anyway, so I did that for a while, and then I started uh, doing concrete work. So mm -hmm. like when I was in college, I got hooked up with this guy. Uh, a buddy of mine was working for this guy doing polished concrete. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I would have quit that job. My first, the first outing with them, I would have quit, but we were in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. so I couldn't quit. You know, mm -hmm. and in retrospect, it was kind of good that way because it just, you know, it was it was probably the hardest job I've ever done. It mm -hmm. was definitely harder than the military. Um, and, but anyways, so that's a different story. So I started doing that stuff in Colorado cause I knew, you know, I could make decent money at it and all that kind of stuff. And real estate wasn't really working out cause like the real estate game's kind of weird, right? Like you like people come to your studio cause you're good at what you do. You know what I mean? They come out here, they try it, you know, they, they see how it is. They see your expertise They're you know, whatever they like your personality, things like that. Uh, I think real estate, especially at that time, was just straight up like who you knew, just the luck of the draw. Because there was, it was so saturated with real estate agents. It was just, and I was working like two other jobs trying to do real estate. Like I would go to the coffee shop for like in the morning and then I would go to the office and then I would go, actually that's another job I did. I was cleaning cars at the Denver airport uh -huh. for uh, Labor Ready. It was like a temporary hire place. Wow, you were really... Hustling. Hands on, yeah. Yep. And Sheila was pregnant. We found out Sheila was pregnant, um, which we had planned, but not like, you know how some people are like, on this date, we're, you know, our kid's going to be this old and we're going to have this set aside. Like, we were like, sure. we we're like, hey, we've been living together for a year. Like, let's kind of take this thing to the next level. Like, I like you, you like me. You know, let's have a kid, and then, it, but then it, your first one, it's like I'm sure you have kids. You're like, yeah. you're never ready for the first one. No one is. Yeah. You're no one ready for any kids. I got three myself. Yeah. And they're nice so I'm there. thinking like, yeah. sweet, I'll get this real estate license. All I gotta do is sell like three houses this year. That's like whatever. It's like what's three percent of three hundred thousand, right? It's like that's like ten grand or something. So, then I sold one house. I did one nice. deal. Nice. Um, but I was like, it, you spend so much money as a real estate agent. Like you're always paying MLS fees, all this mm. kind of stuff. So I was just like the money I was making was just going out the door. So I had mm -hmm. to find a way to make money like two day. And that's how I started doing, um, uh, -oh. uh, -oh. I gotta take this. Okay. <laughs> boss man calling. This is boss man calling. Boss, oh, boss man so. calling. Yeah, just careful with the tripod when you go by. Uh, you can step in that box. Like that's probably be better. <laughs> Oh yeah, we can, we can spin.
space while he's out. Um, yeah. So wow, yeah, he's got quite a yeah. He's got a story. He like he likes to talk. He's he's that's that New Yorker in him. He's he's a talker. <laughs> and goes down a rabbit hole sure, into another sure. rabbit hole. Good dude. Though. I love working with him. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's. So tell me about like, okay, so, and and this won't be far off the mark. Um, I have very limited military experience. Actually, I'll run that all down just so that the cards are on the table, so I know. Like, I have a lot of guys that I train that are ex-military, okay. so that's okay. that's where the bulk of my experience of military kind of comes in. But then. I have lived on an army base in Germany okay. um, for six months. I taught there, though I wasn't in the military. I was civilian. I was, I did a teaching internship uh, right. with a high school there, okay. uh, awesome. Baumholder, Germany. So, um, and I think that base is closed, or that school is closed. Yeah, one of one of the two. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, that's that's the bulk of my. So I, I've been inside of the military apparatus a little bit, yeah, but yeah, overall. Yeah. Like, I think there are a lot of people there. It's like, I would, I think you'd be, maybe you'd be surprised or not surprised how many people, like you say, Marine or Guard or Navy, and it's yeah. all the same it's, to them. It's so all the same, I, yeah. yeah. They, so, they, they hear military and they just, they hear military. Right. Yeah. So, they don't know. If you could just, like, talk a little bit, talk a little bit about the Guard, and then yeah, we'll get James back on here in a second. But, like, um, you know, what, what distinguishes it? From the other branches and what maybe why why this and not the others or something like that and and, and it's okay if it, it, like they get upset or whatever yeah like, absolutely like, I, mean, I got marines in here i got yeah. navy guys i got i got a lot of x any x anything i've got yeah, it like and you, and so you got it and and yeah. that you know we're all gonna you know bad mouth each other or this that, yeah, that's thing. And really, at the end of the day, you know, I have respect for anyone that wants to join the military mm -hmm. at all. You know, whether it be Air Force, Navy, mm -hmm. Marines, Army. Obviously, him and I are National Guard recruiters, so obviously mm -hmm. we want everyone sure. to come to us. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I honestly personally think after you graduate high school, you should be doing two years in military. I, see. I, I think that's that's something, especially with this generation coming up and the ones to follow. It, it's not like when him and I grew up and when you grew up. It, it's it's a different era. Um, and honestly, I think everyone should be required to do at least two years in the military. Okay. That's 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 my belief on that. Kind of give them direction because at eighteen, no one knows what they want to do. I mean, I didn't join until I was twenty four. He was twenty two, twenty three. Same thing. I was twenty seven. There you go. Twenty seven. <laughs> so I mean, you know, at least if you're at the gate at eighteen, you're doing it for two years, twenty. Mm -hmm. you, you might have some some better direction. Mm -hmm. um, so. Like he was saying, military, everyone knows military, but they don't know the different branches. So with us, with the National Guard, we fit into your life. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's nice because it's just one week in a month and two weeks over the summertime. I mean, you can Google that yeah. it, and, it, and it'll tell you the, pretty much the answer. Um, but where, we dis, where we're different is, is we're about the community. Mm -hmm. We're about here in Texas, we're here about taking care of Texans, and we find a way to kind of work around your life and what you want to do with what you want to do with your life so whether that be go to school be a full-time teacher instructor like yourself firefighter mm -hmm. law enforcement uh, cops anything like that we fit around you we I see. you come to us and we we help each other out we better your life and you come to us to better our forces um, and and that's why it's it's the best of both worlds because you have that freedom to do what you want to do those 27 mm -hmm. days of the month because we're not taking too much of your time. We pretty much just fit into your schedule and help you out succeed and you help us make our numbers and our forces better and stronger. Okay. And that's that's really what it comes down to and it's nice because it's you're not wearing this uniform every day. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have the respect, you have the appreciation and, and that's the longevity of it is whether you do six years or 20 years, I'm at 13, you're what, seven, eight years in, right? Sure. Sure. So, <laughs> um, no, you're not. You're only like at three or four. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, we're at four right yeah. now. Yeah. So four years, 13 years, you know, I'm up and over the hurdle. So I'm looking at this long term, you know, I'm not going to school. I'm not using my education benefits, but I got my kids going to school for free now. Oh, cool. I got, and, it, and it's not just that. It's it's the respect. It's someone knows that you're in the military. Mm -hmm. It's that appreciation. Thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. Um the camaraderie, the, the friendships that you build. I mean, he's probably got friends. I know I got friends that I went to basic training with. And mm -hmm. you meet people along the way. I mean, the military is huge, 
but at the same time, it's very small. Mm -hmm. And you and I know I can call this dude at eleven o'clock at night, be like, "Hey, I'm moving. Can you help me move?" That's and it. I know he'll do that. Mm -hmm. You don't. You, you might not have those friends on the civilian side. You might not have that brotherhood or sisterhood if you're, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a female. Um, and that's what it's really all about: is mm -hmm. building that camaraderie, building that friendship, building that longevity of of being able to know that you can call on someone at any time at the end of the mm -hmm. day. And that's. That's what the military is really about and it's about just coming together and i mean you're not alone him and i are wearing the same uniform i've been a little bit longer i have a little more experience but i know i can rely on him and and vice versa and that's that's what you know we're all about well that's awesome beautiful. yeah beautiful. absolutely I agree. yeah well in the favorite phrase in the military right? just to piggyback off of what he said yeah um yes. you know the, the national guard can really fit just about anybody yep. depending on where they're at mm -hmm. um for like I, I guess the most bang for your well let's back up the reason i did it right so my, my long-winded ridiculous story that i was telling yeah yeah i was going to come back to it we, we, we were trying to here's, we were the, come here's back the, to the point that. here's the point of it all right <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> i think i said long format i could tell that story that story could be like four hours long mm -hmm. um but you know i find myself in colorado working these jobs that are just going to be dead-end jobs mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, kind of loving it because let's face it, I'm a little rough around the edges. You know, I've tried, I've got the got the degree, did all that kind of yeah. stuff, but I was mm -hmm. did the real estate thing, but I was always kind of not quite a, a perfect fit yeah. with it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I was like, what am I gonna do? We're in we're in Colorado. I have you know a, a six month old. It's me and my wife. We're in a one bedroom apartment. We got in early, so we were paying like 800 bucks a month, which is like crazy now. Yep. Mm. And uh, by the time, at this point in time, it was probably like 1100. I think they were working on making it like 12. And wow. these, and these, the, the, the apartment complex was awesome. The ladies mm. that ran that place loved us. Mm. Um, but to get a two bedroom was going to be like at least like 2,000, 2,500. And, um, yep. you know, I'm like, well, I'm making decent money with what I'm doing now. I'm able to like put a hundred bucks on the nightstand each night and kind of build up some sort of savings because we didn't have anything, mm -hmm. you know, totally paycheck to paycheck. And, uh, so we're like, well, what do we do? We got to move in with family, right? We didn't have any family out there. We were both from different places. So it was like, do we go to Buffalo or do we go to Texas? Mm -hmm. And you know, Texas kind of won out, you mm -hmm. know? Um, my wife doesn't like the cold, you know what I mean? Her family here. I'm was, good with the cold too. I, you know, I, I like it down here. Yeah, so I mean, it, they just, it, it ended up making sense to come to Texas. And I thought, well, if I'm going to give up Colorado, I'm going to, like, what's what's another dream that I have left, right? Like, let's, you know, I've, I've, I did the AmeriCorps thing. That wasn't, like, the biggest success, but I did it. I did college, you know, for whatever. Moved to Colorado, and now I got to give this up. So I was like, well, I've always wanted, I've, the military thing had always been in my mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And to anybody out there that's ever kind of, like, heard the call or whatever, like, they'll probably never go away like you got to find something whether sure. it's being yeah. a first responder sure doing martial arts like you got to kind of you know feed that dragon every now and again and so yeah. i was like well we're gonna move to texas i'm gonna join the national guard mm. and i kind of said it to my wife at the time like almost like i was waiting for her to be <laughs> like no you're not mm. and she was like said like do it yeah. <laughs> i was yeah, like got to. i was like okay so we moved uh to new Braunfels, you know in what 2017 uh we got here like july 4th of 2017 mm -hmm. uh, like drove the u they got to fly i drove the u-haul from colorado by myself mm. and um had like a nice long drive by myself like thinking about it we got here i uh, talked to a recruiter our first week and i was enlisted the last day of july in 2017. Nice. And so I was originally going to go in as like an Intel guy, you know, mm -hmm. I, I had a degree, I scored well in the ASVAB, God bless my recruiter, he's like, he's like, you're a smart guy, you got a degree, <laughs> go officer, do all this stuff, but, uh, you know, as the, the picture I've kind of painted, I've just never really kind of fit into those finer mm -hmm. edges, so I was like, we go to the MAPS, the Military Entrance Processing Station, and I was like, I'm going to do infantry, mm -hmm. and my recruiter was like, what? Like, you idiot? And they're like, you want to jump out of planes? I was like, yep. hell yeah, I want to jump out of planes. <laughs> and so I ended up in an airport. It's like, my favorite movie or something. Yeah, yeah. I just, you know what yeah. I mean? Like a lot of my friends back home have been Marines and stuff. And they're like, if we're going to do it, like, you know, you got pockets, right? He's like, well, between there, you got something else, right? So I reached out and grabbed those. You'd be good to go. And the infantry, right? <laughs> you guys jumping out of, I, I, jumping out of planes is one of those things that's a, that's a no on my list. But yeah. So, you know. 
Him and I are both paratroopers. We both jump out of plane. I don't do it anymore. I, I've I've moved on to bigger and better things. He he still does it. And bigger and better things. Yeah. Well, I mean, I want to save my legs and my back <laughs> for a little while longer. I can still love. Um, but you know, we tell people we jump out of planes, and they're like, "Oh, that's cool. That's got to be awesome." And in reality, it's completely different than skydiving. It's not skydiving okay. at all. Skydiving, you're jumping at like fourteen, fifteen thousand feet. You're jumping okay. with one person. In the plane, you got maybe four people jumping. Him and I jump. We're jumping at nighttime. We're jumping at a thousand feet. We're jumping with anywhere from 130 people to 500 people. Oh wow! And we're jumping with probably about another 150 pounds of equipment oh. on us um, with ourselves. And it's and it's a static line jump. So you the the static line is hooked up to your parachute, and you only have about six seconds of free fall, and then you it hit the ground, and then it automatically opens. And I see. Yep. Huh. So I mean. We're at a yeah. We're at about a thousand feet, you know, and we have you know at nighttime about two hundred people around us. So it's not. I'd say that's way cooler than just a couple of guys jumping. Yeah, out of it is, but it's like <laughs> see, like, Andy Stump and I had this conversation up in Montana, and like he, so he holds the record for like the the highest and the longest wingsuit jump. Or oh, whatever. Wow. Like, like so he did that to raise money for the seals and everything i think that's my understanding of it and he didn't he took a little exception to my way of describing him when i looked at it because i was like dude you jumped out of a plane in like a giant windbreaker like to me that's what it yeah. looks like yeah and he it took is. it as like he kind of took it disrespect like i was disrespecting him. i was more just like i can't believe you had the courage to, to, do, to that. do that. He's like, yep. it's a wingsuit. It's a wingsuit. And I'm like, look, it, it is what it is. I'm right. just saying I can't do it. I yeah. have like, all respect. Like, wingsuit or windbreaker. I mean, it's funny, too, because he'll talk and he'll be like, no, but like, if we went to a wind tunnel, I'm sure you'd love it. I'm like, I'm sure I would love it in a wind tunnel. Yeah. But you're talking about like, yeah, <laughs> the air, like yeah. which... I'm just not wired that, and it's weird because I do jujitsu and stuff, and people like so. For a lot of people, they're like, you know, you let people choke you, and you're you're rolling. Right? It's like so people assume like because I do that that I'm not very risk adverse, but right. actually I'm I'm tremendously risk adverse in a lot of other things. <laughs> yeah. So like, I, no just, bungee jumping for me. No yeah, you know your boundaries, but yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, as many I'm sure times, it's fun I, in its own way. Yeah, it probably yeah. is. As many times as I've jumped, I've never actually been skydiving. I yeah, see, you know, I see. It, 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 it's. I don't know if it's something I would want to do. Maybe, maybe I, I want to experience. Just love but, it. And I'm like, yeah, it's cool. Like, you know, but I'm just kind of like, yeah, it's not cost and risk yeah. and all this stuff. And yeah. I'm just like, it doesn't doesn't appeal to me enough to want to do it. Like, and I don't know. Maybe it's the best thing in the world. And I've missed and, yeah, I mean, and it's and, it's just like the military. It's not for everyone. Sure. You know, really, at the end of the day, and you know, we want to find those people that want to do it, want to mm -hmm. jump out of the planes, want to join the military. Sure, no, and, sure, sure. You know, be rough around the edges. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what's great about us is that mm -hmm. we'll work with anyone and, you know, mm -hmm. we can fit into your life how, how we cool, need to cool. fit into your life. And, and it's, it's, it's great. Well, an, an airborne's a great uh, kind of example of the military, right? Because, like, the, the first time I jumped, of course you're terrified. Of course you think you're, sure. you know, you're going to die or whatever and all the horrible ways they brief you that you can, you know, be dismembered or whatever. <laughs> um, but then you do it and you hit the ground and you're like, oh, oh my God, I'm okay. You got all my... And you're like, okay, let's do it again. You know, like, when you go to a theme park and there's, like, one good roller coaster, like... Mm. We didn't have the best theme parks where I'm from, so there's always like <laughs> that one. You ride the Superman like 36 times and go home. And, and the Six Flags couldn't have been too far from you. Oh, uh, you're old. That's like two it. hours. Yeah. Not that Six Flags was bad, but like the best coaster there was the Superman. So yeah. you'd go ride the Superman yeah. at least like five times. And so like that's how airborne kind of felt to me. Like I hit the ground and I was like, I was like, oh my god, I'm still alive. Still alive. And the guy next to me, actually the guy behind me in the in the chalk. Uh, you, so when you exit an aircraft, right, like you want to hold your, you, got, you have like your reserve parachute okay. and your main, and when you actually exit, you want to keep your elbows in tight, because yeah, if you do this number like this, you also want to protect your um, reserve. reserve handle, because that can come, you know, it can be really bad. Okay. So you come out of the aircraft like this, well if you do this number, you just spin like a propeller, and all of your static line, or your, uh, your um, risers get twisted, and then your canopy won't open, and that's how you like mm. free fall. And so he, this this guy behind me, you know, we found out afterwards that he was jumping like this and just doing all kinds of things we're not supposed to do. Uh, but anyways, it was like our first or second jump, and I like hit the ground, and I'm like, oh man, I made it. And I look over, and this dude's in a ball. 
He had he had twisted yeah. his shoe. It was falling faster than the, you know his fellow jumpers. jumpers. Mm-hmm. Pulls his reserve, and as he does that, his canopy started to inflate. His main canopy started to inflate. So now his reserve is just balled up in his feet, yeah. and he huh. just comes down and just like a pile of like <laughs> pile of heap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, oh. I've had to pull my reserve a couple times. So <laughs> it's scary because I mean it's literally just a handle, like Seriously. just like a little handle, and it, all you gotta do is go like that, and there you it go. comes. Yeah. And well, with the grappling and everything that I teach, I can uh, empathize with the military telling people to keep their elbows tucked is yeah. really a common thing. Yeah, and you'd like like right? be like, surprised how many people I'm like, no, this elbow's tucked. Yeah, <laughs> you have to like push their elbows <laughs> in, yeah. you know, and it's like, like arm want arm the elbows on the inside, just people naturally go to elbows yeah, on the outside. Even, even with shooting in the military too, if you've never mm-hmm. shot a rifle before, sure. a lot of people will have that, sure. that chicken wing and yeah, that's, yeah. you know, a nice steady platform. But again, it comes to those arms and elbows tight in sure. and, and shoot. Yeah, so I mean, it, it you're able to keep those elbows in. But good. there's so many things like with the military where it's like, you know, on I always say like when I'm sitting down with an apple can, it's like on your side of the table, dude, I sat in that same spot. And I, mm-hmm. I mean, I was 27 years old and I thought I was a badass and I was scared. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there's so many things like that. But then once you get through the training and once you mm-hmm. get through it all, you look back and you're like, what was... It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. And like, you know, even in the moment, like, you know, we'll be doing stuff that just sucks. And a lot of the military is hurry up and wait. So it's just mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. get all your gear together, be there super early, yada, yada, yada. And then you're just like sitting there in your gear. You know, that's kind of airborne, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. you get there super early. There's the, the manif- you know, initial manifest and all this kind of stuff. And you, you finally are like, get your get your parachute on. You get... Uh, uh, JMPI or JMPI, whatever, and um, you're just like sitting in your in your gear for however long, and then you mm-hmm. kind of run off to the plane and sit in the plane for a little bit, however long mm-hmm. the flight is. And by the time they open the door, you're like, please get me out, like please sure. get me out. Yeah. Um, so it's almost a good thing, you know. As soon as you exit the aircraft and you feel your uh, canopy inflate, it's, it's just an like amazing feeling. <sighs> like all that weight, like literally all of that weight, just taken off your shoulders, just mm-hmm. like oh. Uh, Mm. And then you hit the ground, you got to stuff it all back in and run to the shoot turn. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, at the end of the day, you're not by yourself. I mean, mm-hmm. and, that, and that's really what the military is all about, is that you're not sucking by yourself. You're sure. sucking with others to your left and right. Mm-hmm. Find a way to work together and, mm-hmm. and, and you know, build that brotherhood. Because like I said, I mean, him and I jump out of planes and I know I can rely on him and he can rely on me. And that's what the military is really all about at the end of the day. And it, and it, for him and for me, it, it, we have something to fall back on, regardless, right? At the end of the day, we'll always have it, uh, always have a paycheck coming in, mm-hmm. you know, every month. We'll have health insurance for the rest of our lives. We we know we have health insurance because we're in the military, um, and it's the again, like I was saying earlier, it's that it's just that longevity. It's it's the appreciation that that people have for you and that you have for your community, mm-hmm. and just it's building the bonds and it's building mm-hmm. that self. It's it's getting yourself set up for the future and then, and then helping your kids too. And for, yeah, and, and it is those. definitely a legacy builder. Like, yeah. you know, I think back to, you know, me like getting made fun of cause I'm cleaning cars at the airport with like a bunch of like ex cons and people that like can't get a job yeah. and they're like, they're like, Oh, you got a degree. You're an idiot. You're working here. <laughs> you know, like, you know, I was like, working in a warehouse at one point I had a master's and like it, it kind of, it was like this weird, I just was, it, I was in Japan, came back to the States. Just really didn't have much going on. So my dad hooked up some work at a warehouse, just kind of to get me out of the house in some sense. Just yeah, I was yeah. kind of in a lull in some ways. And um, so I go down and work in this warehouse and just we'd be sitting around at the at the break room and it was always my PO says, da 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 da. My PO yeah. says, da, da. and it took me a second to like, oh, parole officer. Yeah. Like to even like get what <laughs> anyone was saying, you know, like, and then it was kind of like, some one of the guys that was working there was college age and he knew i'd been in japan for the last two years so he started asking me about stuff in japan and was like what's like he was all excited to ask me questions and like suddenly like the whole break room's kind of like listening to me talk about something (laughs) in japan and i I really felt and i didn't but i wanted to be like well you know my po said i had to go (laughs) (laughs) you know like he he told me i had to leave the country so one of the guys later in that day was sort of like you have a master's and you're doing this here? And I was like, because I was exploring the possibility of working in management and stuff like that. And I just kind of, they're like, we'll come and kind of get a sense of what we do on the ground yeah. floor and everything. Yeah. And 
It was interesting. I actually really liked working with those guys. And, you know, they were all like, they all had POs, but they were all super nice. Yeah. And, like, oh, yeah. yeah, they were like, they're all characters. I, rem mm -hmm. I remember so many days of being there mm -hmm. and just, you know, and that was throughout my wife's pregnancy too. So mm -hmm. it was kind of like a, a heightened moment for me. Mm -hmm. But they were, I mean, those are some funny, just interesting characters. You know, it's you know. the same thing in basic training too. And you yeah. come back, you hear the kids with their stories. Well, I was in basic training. My drill sergeant said, my drill sergeant said. So I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it's the same sure, thing. Sure. This one time at basic training? Yep. I mean, we, we got kids <laughs> right home right now from, from hometown recruiting. You know, they're, they're off for Christmas and New Year's and you know, they're, they're gossiping to each other. Well, my drill sergeant did this, my drill sergeant did that. So it's. It's the same. I mean, him and I could talk about our, you know, our experience right. at basic right. training. And at the end mm -hmm. of the day, we we all did the same basic training. We've all mm -hmm. gone through, you know, regardless of your MOS, regardless of your male or female, and everyone goes through the same basic What's training. What's my MOS? MOS is your job. Sorry. Okay. That's military okay. Military occupation specialist. specialist. Military occupation specialist. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So and that that's your job. So that that's based off of your ASVAB that you take. You pick the job you want. And what does ASVAB stand for? Aptitude. It's like the armed forces. Yeah. That's what I remember from my time in the military. There would just be like all these acronyms, and it's yeah, like, definitely. like I, I had a, I had a military driver's license at that time. I had to get it because I could. I got special. I got a special kind of um, favor. We got a special favor from the commander of that base to be able to drive a TMP around oh, like, nice. and all that kind of stuff. So we could drive it, and then some of the other teachers ended up violating that and driving right. the TMP from Germany into France. Oh, like, well, yeah, yeah. That's not right. And not supposed to do that. They got quite a bit of trouble for that. Um, the whole, their entire college got barred from future kind of involvement in the Department of Defense. Uh, that I believe incident, it. Like, I believe it. Yeah. yeah. Like they want stripes on it. You know, what is it? What does a TMP even say? I don't think anyone ever told me what a TMP even stands for. Tactical, um, I think it's like, Something personnel. It's basically personnel carrier. I see. Much. Is that like okay. an OTD or something? No, TMP is like a small. Isn't it like a small track vehicle? It's a little van. We had a little van that we'd drive around. Like it's the TMP. Like we would fuel it up at the base and stuff like okay. that for free. Like and it was like a great deal for us. I mean, we were just supposed to be able to use it PX. You know, PX, um, the school and our quarters and that that's uh, all i used it for yeah, and we yeah. could stop for like a meal along the way with yeah. that but like and even that would get us in trouble sometimes <laughs> but someone would be like what is this doing out here yeah. and be like oh we got an order from the commander we, like we could drive, like, drive it we could drive it we can it's okay it's okay <laughs> like kind of like but then yeah these two chicks were just like i don't know they were, they were before idiots. before we were funny story with that too before i went on my last deployment to uh, africa mm -hmm. we uh so none of none of the military vehicles have actual keys and there's like mm. no actual ignition huh so a lot of the vehicle vehicles are just like a switch and a, a button start and everything like huh. that so the military humvees we had sitting in our motor pool and one of the kids decides to take said humvee off post and go have a nice field trip you know with it and bring it to you know different locations and everything and Ended up getting in trouble for it, so it was like, and, like, and the best part about it was he lived in the same city we were in. Mm -hmm. So like, if he wanted to get off post, he could have just been like, "Hey, like, Brian, mm -hmm. could you come get me? I want to just like sneak off post for a little while." But yeah, he, <laughs> he uh he took it to the extreme. So sure, was, sure. Was that was probably nice. before social media when everyone knew that. You oh no, it was it was it was in seventeen. He was oh, military. So he was no, he was military. Yeah, yeah. These people like that, I was. You know, we were doing the teaching there. A bunch of them for, were from Ball State, Indiana, like, and I, I was coming from Truman State, Missouri, but they're just these two girls within that group that just, just kind of never really got that they were yeah. doing a thing at a military base. Like, it was sort of like, I'm at a summer camp, kind of, like, in their mind <laughs> yeah. or something. And I parents, like, sometimes be like, but this is an army base, yeah. okay? Like, it's like, I don't know why they make such a big deal about what we bring on, but it's like, it's a base. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, I don't know why we can't just bring my friend on. It's like that's not how it works. It's a military yeah. base. It's a secure like yeah. You can't just bring anyone. Did you guys not get that when we came here? Like it was like a and I remember the guy that was kind of our liaison officer and he, those two in particular. I mean, yeah. He would always he'd talk to me and he'd just be like, two girls from Ball State. Like he would say their names, but it's just like Yeah. They just don't get it. Yeah, they? Yeah. Like, they just don't understand where they are, like and 
like I was always just like really appreciative. They gave us a really good deal and it was great. I got to be in Germany and it's like, I did all my fun stuff off base, you know, but yeah. I, I put, I would put the bill for it. I wasn't trying yeah. to like, oh, absolutely. I wasn't trying yeah. to drive the TMP down to where I wanted to go <laughs> yeah, or something, yeah. you know, like, oh, well it's free gas. Like it's not free gas. Like gas, that's like gas supplied by the military. Yeah, yeah. It's it supplied pays. by taxpayer. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like you got to think a little beyond that. Like, yeah, it's not completely free. I mean, it's yeah. free to you because it's not coming out of your yeah. pocket, but someone's paying for it. Yeah, right. they'll pay taxes eventually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. hopefully. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, knows? But I know you guys got to get get on here. I think we're getting fairly close to maybe yeah. where you guys got to jam out. Um, any closing things you wanted to add about just? Joining I mean, the if I could or... bring it all back together, because mm -hmm. I'm definitely a rambler. Yeah, um, we've noticed. Yeah. So, you know, get it, getting into the guard has given me the ability to go from always probably going to be working in like a dead end type job mm -hmm. to having the ability to make this a full time career mm -hmm. or do other things, get certified in something. Mm -hmm. I now have insurance for my family, which was huge. Yep. I was trying mm -hmm. to get, you know, affordable and affordable insurance back in back in the day before the mm -hmm. laws changed, <coughs> all that kind of stuff. And, you know, really you know, for somebody that's like maybe high school age or college age mm -hmm. that wants to go to college or wants to learn a trade, mm -hmm. you know, we're kind of, we kind of fit in perfectly with that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if, if you need to get out of Texas for some reason, if you want to go and wear this uniform every day, we get that 100% and, you know, mm -hmm. active duty is probably the way to go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but just because you're in the guard now doesn't mean you can't go active duty. Um, Sergeant DiCarlo kind of did it in reverse, which is sort of how everyone thinks of it. But um, what we can kind of do is get you in, you know, at like 17 or in high school, get you through college. You know, we have some of the best tuition assistance available. Uh, we beat, you know, the other components by like more than double at this point as far as money for college goes. And then once you finish college, you can, you know, switch to that active duty side, hopefully go officer, you know, but you don't have to. But all of your time uh, and experience is going to benefit you on that other side. That makes sense. I mean, are people going to make fun of you? Yeah, that's the military. You're going to get, you know, you could be the most high speed dude ever. Somebody's going to yeah. have something to say. Yeah. But um, you know, you could get in with us and like the unit that that he was a part of and that I'm in, and knock out you know Ranger School, um, you know some of these other schools. You know, get your tab, get airborne, get all that stuff that isn't as easy to get active duty side. Mm -hmm. And when you show up there, they're like, holy, like, this dude's, this dude's awesome. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and you did all that through the National Guard, getting your college paid for and living mm -hmm. your own life for most of the time. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. We kind of work. And then the other side of it is, like, somebody like me, right? I had a family. You know, it was getting late in the game. I was 27 when I enlisted. So I was like, man, I'm on the doorstep of 30. I better have life figured out by then. Or at least that's what I was kind of telling myself. Because time goes fast. You guys sure. know. You know, once you get out of college, it's just like, holy, uh, three yeah. years have gone by. Like, what? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it kind of helped me with that as well, you know, it gave me something that I knew I could build with and like, now my kids are going to go to college for free. Like now I have health insurance, like now, you know what I mean? Like all of those things where instead I was, okay, I need to make money. So I need to work at least like 50 hours this week. You know what I mean? And like construction's kind of feast or famine. So it's like, we got this amazing job, honey, I'm going to be gone for like two weeks straight. And then the next week I'm at home for a week, not making any money. Like mm -hmm. at least this gives you that Driving stability. You crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was a very long winded roundup. Mm -hmm. um, that's, 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 that's cut me off, man. Nah, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're definitely, definitely cut off. And to round it up, sum it all up too. I mean, we fit into your life mm -hmm. and that's what it's about. It's Texas health in Texas. We're here for the community. I mean, just this past weekend alone, we had a toy drive mm -hmm. with the Salvation Army. We were able to put that together kind of last mm. minute on the on the whim, but we made that happen. And so sure. now we helped out, you know, families in, in the community that, that didn't have, um, you know, weren't, weren't able to have Christmas before. Sure. So we were able to put that together and that's, that's what that's we're awesome. all about. And that's what this uniform and the National Guard is all about. And, and, you know, we fit into your life how we can fit into your life and, and work. Do you, you know other. how much we raised in that toy drive? I haven't told you the number yet. What's the number? Do we know? So we raised like just shy of 1800 bucks in cash. So, um, and then we they estimate like another like $2,000 in toys. There you go. That's awesome. And that's, yeah. that's what we were able to do. And we did that within like a two weeks notice. Yeah, we did you know, it two so weeks. Right, right. We talked, yeah, we talked about that. Uh, this just won't know, but yeah, we, that's what we were talking about at the chamber. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. Like, I mean, it's amazing what you can put together just even outside of the guard, just like, I think a lot of people don't realize how 
charitable people actually yeah. want to be and yeah. given the opportunity most people are pretty happy to yeah. be at the I mean and we were set, <laughs> we were set up right on Walnut too so I think yeah. that drew a lot of sure. people in too and, sure. and like I said we tried to spread the word as much as we can yeah I was shaking people down at the end yeah people yeah, started yeah. to just drive through and at one point I was just like walked out this truck and yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like hey I'm just trying to drive through here and I was like well we're doing this toy drive yeah and <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But we appreciate you having us on. Sure, absolutely. We would definitely pleasure. like to yeah. do this again in the future if we can. Yeah. Should have this up in a couple of weeks, probably. Elemental Labs. Yeah. Yeah. LMNT. Electrolytes. It's got what plants crave. I mean, yeah. You need them electrolytes. You run. Yeah. Have you guys seen a couple that you try it? You guys probably love it. It's um, it's a real game changer for people. Um, yeah, I, I was. I was kind of blown away by it. I'm, I'm, I'm on the full addict level on it. So it's just nice. like, you, you don't think you like a lot of people. Are like, yeah, I'm good. I drink so much water. Da, 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 and it's just a. Is it something you drink throughout the day, or is it like first thing in the morning drink? Oh, um, usually I'll drink it when I get up. Okay. And then like with what I'm doing, there's a fair amount of sweat involved. So it's yeah, like kind of probably drinking throughout the day too. Right, and it just re like on on a practical level, the amount, the total quantity of water you drink goes way down mm -hmm. so like i'll give you an example that of like kind of the more extreme end of it before i left korea i was co i was kind of interning at another gym i coached all the classes for a week and that's like one of the most probably the most successful gym in korea like they're 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 a bumping gym so i was teaching eight hours a day Oof, and it was Seoul, and it's the summer, and the air conditioning like ain't doing anything. Yeah, so well, I've been it's there humid. Before. Yeah, you're sweating, and like I mean, I'm just I was pouring sweat out all day, and I think the first day I drank like four liters or something like that, like just, yeah. just driving it down, and then um, and then I just kind of remembered like, oh yeah, I've got this electrolyte mix from like Rob or whatever, so I, I just put that in. And the next day I drank a liter of water. Wow. just like a huge difference and felt good yeah it's yeah. not like and it's almost like sort of like you're topped off really fast to where you don't want to keep drinking because yeah. a lot of times you're not without the electrolytes you're not really drawing the hydration in actually and so yeah. we've been trying to work with like getting element and it's starting to get adopted by more like the i think it's like u.s olympic weightlifters have adopted it like it's it's starting to it's get to into a lot out. of yeah. stuff like we're we're trying to get it in with like one of our guys is a SWAT member in San Antonio. We're trying to get that into their training things because they had someone like die of dehydration during the training or something. And it's like, this will lick it right away. Like yeah. you just get these guys on this stuff one, just one a day and they'd be like, good. So yeah, um, yeah no, it's just, it's well formulated. Um, you know, a person with time, you can figure out how to make those things by yourself, but uh, as a friend of mine put it really well, you could do that. It won't taste nearly as good. Yeah, this probably. stuff actually tastes good. That's good. It's yeah. not full of sugar. It's not full of all the garbage. Like most of the stuff you find in the, just comparing it to stuff you would find in like your gas station or supermarket, this stuff is just, just sugar it's down. Garbage. It's just yeah. sugar, and it doesn't Gatorade's really. Gatorade's got like fifty-two grams of sugar in it. I think it's, it's pretty bad. Like, they they Gatorade's gave it to us at training. Actually, we had uh, like little hydration uh, yeah. things, salt packs, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. When you couldn't put it in your, you couldn't put anything in your canteen because it would mold. So you had to like, like shoot the powder, sure. and then I see. chug and it. Was, water. I mean, it didn't taste bad. You yeah. know. Mm. You'll 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 like this, I'm sure. Most people do. So yeah, we've got our gym members are all very into this. It's it's a hot seller for our gym, I there think. You go. But right. yeah, I'll, I'll get you guys some. And uh, thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely, Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Let me get this off here.